Shalom. All praises to Abba Shabbat Shamayam. All praises to our Father who art in heaven. That being Yahweh, and we do that by Hashem Yahweh Shai. In, in the name of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And we're giving all praise to the Most High, who the world calls God, or calls the Most High, calls Jehovah. His name is Yahweh. So I just wanted to touch on certain verses in Deuteronomy 23. And then just flow in the spirit. So it says, Thou shalt not raise a false report, put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. For in the ancient world, a, a documented witness was a serious thing, especially when it came to our Torah, that being our law, even our wisdom, which is the word. And we know Yahweh is the word. So it says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. The certain ones, Deuteronomy 17, so around 5. Alright, we'd have to start here. We'd have to start here. Deuteronomy 17 and 1. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto Yahweh, Allah any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favouredness. For that is an abomination unto Yahweh, Allah Ka. All right, so there was no blemish, there was no evil favoredness in Yahweh Shai. That's why he's the perfect sacrifice. When it comes to sacrifices for sin, for Israel, he fulfilled that. There's no, there's no sacrifice that can outdo that, or undo that. It says, if there be found among you within any of thy gates, which Yahweh, thy God, giveth thee. Man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of Yahweh, Allah Haika, in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which, that, which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Now the next verse is the key verse. I'm just going to take a sip of water real quick. So Deuteronomy 17 and 6. At the mouth of two witnesses, or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, by the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Of course, if you thought of two witnesses, what should immediately come to your head is Revelation, the 11th chapter. It says, Revelation 11 and 3, And I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. And that represents the um, southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Again, being reconciled that... Uh, Wall of partition that Ephesians speaks about. I think that's Ephesians, the second chapter. That being broken down. And then Revelation 11 and 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before. The, it says they're the power of the earth. And the olive tree, again, that should remind you of Romans, the 11th chapter. We start... Um, 11 and 14 If by any means I may provoke to emulation Them which are my flesh I might save some of them Again, that's, a, that's the elect, a remnant That's not the whole uh, Israel in this dispensation It says For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead And even when you go in the word reconcile What does it mean? Reconcile If you re means again or back it says look for if the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches so they all coming from what the same root it says and if some of the branches be broken off them of the same root and now being a wild olive tree work grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee. It says, Then what th thou, Salachi, 
Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I may be, might be grafted in. And then everyone's going, oh, see, so the non-Israelites. Well, I think it's Jeremiah 11. Is that right? Okay. Jeremiah 11 and 17. <coughs> so like 16. It says, Yahweh called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult, he has kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, of hosts that, that planted thee, hath pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. So that's how you'd become a stranger. Again, is it Proverbs, the uh, seventh chapter? Which talks about the strange woman. There you are. So it says, um, Rev not Revelation, Proverbs 7 and 4, saying to wisdom thou art my sister and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which fluttereth with her words. Remember, it's a strange woman, right? And then... Bear with me. Where it talks about, it says she forgot her covenant or the covenant. Right, I can't see that there. Salah, yeah. Let me pause that. Right, so lucky it's the, se the second chapter. There we are, there we are, perfect. So lucky. Alright, Proverbs 2 and 16. Again, talking about wisdom. That's um, why I got, I can't, end it. I confounded myself. <laughs> Proverbs 2 and 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. So the covenant of her God would be what? Exactly. So how is she a strange woman? When, when that covenant, our covenant, was only given to Israel. So again, it's it's relating your um, w wisdom as your kinswoman, that near unto thee. But then again, you have strangers, which still were meant to have the covenant. Just like, to tie it back to Romans... It'll be 9 and 3 through 5. Romans 9 and 3 through 5. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Mashiach, for my brethren, my Achim, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh, Mashiach came, who is overall. Yahweh bless forever. Aman. So there you are. The covenant was for them strangers there. We might touch Ephesians 2 just briefly. Ephesians 2 and 11 through. We'll hit, we'll hit, we'll hit. 18. No, 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 no. We'll actually read through the end. We'll actually read the whole of a few... No, we won't, we won't, we won't. I'm getting carried away. See, that's what that's what happens, man. The scriptures, too, like, there's so much. You just want to read the whole thing. What I'll do, I'll just read through 18. And then we'll see where it goes, Lord willing. So Ephesians 2 and 11. Sorry about that. It says, Wherefore remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh made by hands, at the time, ye were without Mashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai in the world. But now in Mashiach Yahweh Shai, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Mashiach. So the strangers, just as that woman whose covenant she forgot or trespassed, she, she's a stranger 
but she was still uh, the covenant of promise was still unto her in it the, the covenant of her god was still with her but she became a stranger it says in 13 of ephesians 2 but now in mashiach yahawashai ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of mashiach for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so make him peace, and that he might re reconcile, remember again, re reconcile both into Yahweh Bashem Shai, in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father ha'aba abba nawa it says now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of yahweh basham yahweh shai and the saints are israelites the saints saints is just a a synonym or it's just an, another title for the children of Israel, the elect at that. So we will hit them. We've hit them before, but we'll hit them. Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints and together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. We've gone through enough witnesses to show the covenants were for a certain, is, were a certain people and the strangers. The strangers of that people. <laughs> These Christians thought I got soft, man. Psalms 148 and 14 He exalteth also the horn of his people The praise of his saints Even of the children of Israel A people near unto him Praise ye Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai And when you see um, Even Some people may go well, The analogy I always use is You've got a close group of people So you might have your, your Your close associates And then you've got an outer circle You don't really um contact them too much and you might say i'm having a gathering <laughs> not in this time <laughs> with the government guidance and all of that and try for lockdown and but you might say we're having a gathering and i'll invite my smaller circle but i'll even invite two people from the outer circle that i don't usually commune with and that would be even would be like making an an extra something different or out of the normal Whereas in Old English, even was just really emphasizing that it was happening. And brothers like to make the comparison of saying indeed. So when you add that context in. So I'll read it again. I'm going to say the King James Version, but replace even with indeed to give the context. And then I'm going to go to a place to prove even being um, more so emphasizing that same point than saying it's an extra or something else. So Psalm 148 and 14. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, indeed of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise ye, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahushai. I believe it's Genesis 19 and 9, talking about Lot, who was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. It says, Genesis 19 and 9, And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. So when you read in context who that man was, it was Lot. So when it's saying even Lot, it's emphasizing or it's, or it's shewing that. So there's no way out for you Christians. Even means indeed. So I think we're in Ephesians. Ephesians 2 and... Yeah, we we're, were touching on the saints, that's why that came up. All right. Ephesians 2 and 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And when you go in the word a citizen, that's related to a, a city or a polis, a police. That's where you get the term police, the rulership or management of a city. And what city would that be? The holy city, New Jerusalem which will come out, come down from heaven in accordance with Revelation 21. I'm talking about that new Jerusalem. That's the same of, as um, who's, there's no, no more uh, sorrow, mourning, pain, tears, paraphrasing. 
and also Revelation, the seventh chapter, I believe it's the literal last verse of that. It talks about the same thing, talking about them elect that are sealed, proving that that city is a people first, Jerusalem being a city before a place, or a, uh, sorry, <laughs> Jerusalem being a people before a place, one said a city before a place, Salahi. All right, and we've got Zechariah 1 and 19 on that. It says, And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem, and Yerah, Yerah Shalom, meaning the city of peace. And that's what city this is talking about, being uh, fellow citizens of that specific city. This is it. So I'll read it one more time. Ephesians 2 and 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Yehawah Basham Yehawah Shai, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yehawah Shai Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in Ha'adawan or Adonai in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of Yahweh through the Spirit. And when we're talking about habitation of the Lord through the Spirit, we might as well just get this anyway. Because, um, well, I'll get the key point where I say that and then we'll read it. So Revelation 21 and 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God, Yahweh himself, shall be with them and be their God. So this is the, the tab tabernacle. Um, I, th I, I can't remember precisely the Hebrew word, so I'm not going to um, say it, but it's the non-Yiddish form of Sukkoth. So I think it's Sakawath, but I could be mistaken. So don't take that as uh, necessarily accurate. But we were actually in Exodus... 23 and this so far has had nothing to do with it really so we'll go back to this it says uh, Exodus 23 and 2 thou shalt not f follow a multitude to do evil neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment so we're not meant to join in with people just because well, this the crowd mentality is actually a fancier term for it like a um a social science or a psych psych psychology study on that and the word psych not like psych but like psychology psyche that that goes back to the greek word psyche or psyche something like more greek but psyche means soul so psychology would go back to the word psyche and logos so soul and word so logos you have logic that all goes back to the word word <laughs> the word for word Verse 3, it says, Neither shall thou countenance a poor man in his cause. So countenance, let's actually touch the word countenance. It's bugging. Alright, countenance. It's the word hadar. There and it's basically it says to honor three times, countenance once, crooked places once, glorious one, put forth one. And it would obviously link back to Deuteronomy 1 and 19. No, no, James 1 and 19. Well, I can't remember where it goes back to in Deuteronomy in that case. James 1 and 17. No, 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 Deuteronomy 1 and 19. Salah, yeah. It's got to be that. Bro, Deuteronomy 1 and 17, my fault. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is Yahweh's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And that's obviously talking in Moses' time, but now we bring it unto Yahweh Shai, and he would hear it, for he is the intercessor or the mediator but the whole point is having respect of persons and if you have respect of persons you commit sin
there is James 2 and 9. James 2 and 9, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as, transgress as transgressors. And then 1 Peter 1 and 17, and if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. We also have one of Acts. I perceive um, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is no respect of persons. And people try to say that that because obviously it's going to the Gentiles, obviously them being the, again the Israelite foreigners. But people try and say that that means um, that the Lord doesn't have respect unto Israel. So Acts 10 and 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And if you read Genesis thirty five, eleven through twelve, or ten through twelve, Genesis forty eight and nineteen, it shows you that there's multiple nations in Israel. Ezekiel thirty seven talks about two nations in Israel. But we're just touching on respect of persons, so on Exodus two. Exodus 2 and 25, it says, And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Okay. And then you also have Leviticus 26 and 9. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. So when we talk about respect of persons, I'd say it's talking about within the nation of Israel. A Christian would say, no, it means literally everybody but then why would he say Esau have a hated if he didn't have um, certain distinctions or, or discriminations discernment meaning to um, to fight to distinguish basically um, so that wasn't really Exodus 23 I'm not sure what the title of that is but I pray it was edifying giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Shalom